Dr. Neil Renault, optometrist at Eagle Eye Performance Vision, where we specialize in vision therapy. And today's video is all about ADD, ADHD, and how it can be impacted by vision. And before we get started, make sure to hit subscribe, follow along with us, find us on Facebook and Instagram as we post more and more content to help make vision therapy better known and more visible. Okay, ADD, ADHD, Attention Deficit Disorder and Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Basically, these are diagnosed conditions where someone may have hyperactivity, impulsive behaviors, they struggle to pay attention and concentrate, and they can struggle with sustained attention, so sticking with something for a long period of time. And this is significant in our modern classroom because we're asking children to sit still in a chair for many hours a day, concentrate on things for a very long time, and it might even be a subject material that they're not very interested in. So they're having to hold still, concentrate, and think about things and, and uh, concentrate on things that they're not super interested in. And both adults and children can be affected by AD, ADD and ADHD. And about 10% of American children have been diagnosed with these disorders now, which has doubled in the last 20 years. So this is a huge problem. It's increasing rapidly. And our goal is to address the visual side of attention, which you may not have thought about before or heard much about. The fact of the matter is undiagnosed functional vision problems, they can often mimic or complicate ADD and ADHD. Studies show that children with ADD or ADHD are actually three times more likely to have near point functional vision deficits. And while vision therapy does not treat ADD or ADHD, it really addresses the functional learning related vision problems that overlap and mimic those attention disorders. So avoidance of near work like reading and writing, that could be an attention problem or it also could be from discomfort from reading and from focusing your eyes up close where lots of muscles are flexing your eyes are working incredibly hard when you're reading. So some children struggle with eye strain and visual fatigue and headaches, and they can get really frustrated when their eyes are bouncing all over the page. They can't keep their place. They can't comprehend what they're reading. And now it just becomes a chore instead of something they enjoy. So I tend to avoid things that I'm uncomfortable with. I think we all do that, don't you? You avoid things that you don't like doing or that make you very uncomfortable or, or even in pain. So there are some signs that we're watching for, for when vision can be affecting attention. And for children who they lose their concentration when they're reading and doing homework, it's very hard for them to sustain all the way through the end. Um, those children, they often, if, if they can uh, play games, they can play video games, they can go outside, they can play with Legos. They have great attention then, but then they really get restless and irritable and frustrated when it's time to start reading and they don't wanna do it anymore. Then you know, is that a purely attention problem or is there a different type of problem, maybe their vision that is making uh, things like reading where their eyes are really working very hard. That could be why they are showing such poor attention in certain areas and then in other areas their attention is fine. Children may be very disruptive in class. They could look out the window or talk to their neighbor, very chatty, especially during reading time or assignment time. Because if they're, think if their eyes are uncomfortable and, and un, in some pain when they are focusing up close on the page, then they're gonna look around at other, other places that are a little further away, more relaxing on their eyes and not as uncomfortable. So it may not be that they're being disruptive, but they're just avoiding something that, that causes pain. They may be compelled to touch everything. If their visual sense is struggling, they're gonna use other senses to try to compensate. They may, if we have a child who has really restricted peripheral vision and peripheral awareness, then they could bump into things. They could trip over curbs and carpet edges and really just seem like they have a, a low awareness of their surroundings and, and uh, bump in or knock into things that, that uh, we would assume that they can see. They may hate to read, but love being read too by teachers, by parents. Lots of kids with attention disorders, they really are, they can be very smart kids. They're, they're not necessarily the child who's going to struggle at everything in life. In our case, it's really just the kids who struggle with reading and can be very smart and very outgoing, quick learners in ways that don't involve a lot of reading. And the last big warning sign of when a vision problem is interfering with attention is if you start attention med medication and there the child is calmer, they can control themselves a little better, but their grades are about the same. Their reading ability has not changed. Well, they, they are able to control their bodies better, but they are not able to coordinate their eyes any better if there's a vision problem at play. 
So these are all big signs that while, while lots of children definitely do have an attention disorder, these are signs that vision is at least playing a role. It's either mimicking an attention problem or compounding and making it worse. Let's talk about some background information about vision because it's so much more than just being able to see 2020. In fact, most of the patients we see can see just fine far away. All of their problems are in their world that's up close. And think for hundreds, thousands of years, humans were using their eyes to see far away. We were spending most of our day looking at, uh, uh, you know, trying to find animals or enemies. We were farming with big targets. We were doing things that, that uh, let our eyes look far away and then spend brief periods of time focusing our eyes up close. So we had eyes that were perfectly designed for that daily challenge. Look far, spend brief periods up close. So we have this fundamental mismatch of eyes that are great at seeing far away, but we're spending all day looking up close. And for a child who starts off learning how, learning their letters, learning how to read, they can struggle with performance. They can do their best, try really hard, and struggle with decreased performance. It takes a really long time. They don't grasp it. They don't retain what they've learned. As it gets more and more frustrating, as, as failure becomes more common, and then even with increased time, the child can struggle with eye strain, visual fatigue, headaches, then it really becomes something that they're failing at and it hurts, it's very uncomfortable. Eventually we see children go into the pathway of, I don't wanna do this anymore and I'm just gonna to refuse to do it. So the child who refuses to do homework, refuses to read, doesn't want to do anything like that anymore, that is where vision can play a role in their attention is if they have a functional vision problem where they cannot focus their eyes up close move their eyes across the page with tiny precise movements and rapidly process and retain and integrate what they've learned through that visual information on the page. If anything is going wrong there, then they're gonna, they're gonna struggle with performance and symptoms and then eventually potentially not want to do it anymore, looking like they have an attention issue. So doctors tend to be pretty quick with, with diagnosing and medicating for ADD and ADHD as a short-term quick solution to the issue. They need to sit in their chair at school and hold still all day long. They need to concentrate as much as they can during homework and we need to get that fixed right away. But actually about 10% of children today are medicated with attention controlling drugs and that's much higher than any other country. Nowadays lots of parents are looking for a, a, a non-medication or drug-based treatment solution solution to, to attention problems and helping their child succeed and thrive in the classroom with the skills that they have and try to improve the skills that they're struggling with. So once we have a proper diagnosis, then we can target and treat those problems in vision therapy. Our patients work one-on-one -on -one with a vision therapist where they are working on acti activities that specifically target the skills that they struggle with so that we can develop and build up those skills to the age expected values or higher. This personalized treatment works to train the brain to use the eyes better. Most patients have healthy, normal eyes that we are training their brain how to control more efficiently, more effectively, and more automatically as well with minimal effort. And then finally, we need to integrate these new visual skills with their real life tasks and goals. So integrate their vision with learning and with reading and with taking notes in class and with sustaining attention throughout an entire day of school and taking tests and, and completing homework assignments and then reading at home. All of those near point visual tasks that they, they struggle with, we can build up the visual skill and then integrate it with their real life. So then the end result after treatment, once we've taken care of that vision problem, then we really see three different results at the end. One is that the child no longer needs any medication anymore at all because they never really had an attention problem. They really had a vision problem that was mimicking the attention issue. Another result could be that they still need medication. They still truly have an attention problem, but it's improved where they don't need as strong of a dose. They can get by with less. And the third reaction could be that they still need their medication, they still fully need, need help controlling their attention, but they're much more productive and efficient with their attention now because their vision is working on their team. They can, they can look at the page and see it the way that they should. They can move their eyes across the page efficiently and then use their new attention skills with their medication, integrate that with their new visual skills that they've developed and trained so that they, be, they can become a productive and successful student. And good news, vision is developmental. These are skills that no matter where they are to start from, we often can always improve them. And, and that can happen at any age. So children, adults, 
Some people have been struggling with ADD or ADHD for a very long time and don't really know that they have a vision problem that's, that's uh, a compounding and making the issue worse. So we can definitely start that conversation. If, if a lot of this video is making sense to you and, and you can relate with it, give our office a call. Call us at 616-848-7548 and we can start with a, a free phone consultation to go over what you're dealing with and see if it sounds like vision is at play. You can also check out our website at eagleeyevisiontherapy.com for more information. Or if you don't live in the West Michigan area, make sure to check out covd.org and you can find a, an optometrist specially trained in vision therapy and who, who may be able to help you with your difficulties. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this video is helpful for you. Make sure to comment or, or click like if you enjoyed this video and make sure to watch for more content coming out soon.